New season, new host. Today we're getting our new Food Finders host to recommend some legit Filipino stalls in Singapore. If you love Filipino food, tag along with us on this journey. Food Finders! Welcome to season 6 of Food Finders. This is the first episode and we have a new host today. It's Ryan! Good to ah, Not the Ryan you expected. I'm Ryan. I'm actually a food stylist and I was trained as a Japanese contemporary chef maybe. Right, right now right. I do um, food styling and I also run like butter business as well. Basically, compound butters are like butters with uh, different flavours. Usually if you go out and you have your steaks, you actually have butters on top of it when your steaks like kind of melts down and get really nice flavour. On it. So I do like mala butter, salted oh, egg butters, butter. yeah. What, what do you actually do as a food stylist? I think it's easier to kind of compare it to being like a makeup artist, except mm. for the food. So as a chef, I, I try not to have like too much like glues or like, you know, inedible things inside the food. I try to make things more edible and more natural. Yeah. Let's say it's a chicken. I try to put like a little bit of soy mm. sauce to make it look like lively, fresh and more like baked or something like that. We are actually going to do Filipino food. Why Filipino food? Why? Why, right? So, my mom is actually Filipino-Spanish and she's from Pampanga, as people know as the kitchen of uh, Philippines. My dad is actually Peranakan, so he was actually born in Malacca. So I'm like a quarter of each. So that's why I'm uh -huh. introducing Sas to uh, Filipino food today. Let's head on to the first spot now, which is right here. Jum. Alright, so first spot of the day, we are actually at Tai Sing and this is called Second, Second serving. serving. So we're going to try a bunch of things here. One of it is Balabo as well as Tapsilo. Those are like your breakfast staples or, like, or you can have them at tea time as well. What's like a typical Filipino breakfast like? Rice. 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 More rice. Rice. Carbs again. Let's check it out. Yeah, let's go. I originated from Philippines, but I grew up here. Ah, uh, ah so okay, that's the okay. story. Yeah. Ah, so I was right, here right, since right. I was eight. We never had a chance to always find a place that I would say, hey, you can go to this place. It's always, hey, maybe we can get this auntie to cook for you or something yeah. like this. We just try to do what we can. I hope to give an experience. Mm -hmm. More than just the food. Would you say this is more traditional, like accurate to what you would taste back in the Philippines? Uh, definitely, we try to hit the balance. In the beginning, we yeah. try to stick as close to the yeah. Filipino way of cooking. Yeah. So yeah. it's either too salty for the locals, uh, super yeah, yeah. punchy flavor, too sweet for the locals. Yeah. So we kind of modified right. it a bit yeah. because the locals always want something yeah. that has a kick. Other than that, I would say it's very close to. Uh, of Filipino I'm just right, curious, right. like uh, which part of Philippines are your parents Oh, from? I grew up from uh, Subic Bay. So yeah. I think uh, enough talking, let's sure. start eating then. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> what is your car? Ah, what? Oh. Yeah, I think you need to go and save your car. <laughs> oh my god. Pre-meal snack, we have the yes. Taho. Taho is basically what you guys know as Tau Hui. It looks like Tau Hui. Mm. So the main difference here is that we have the brown sugar syrup as you can see here. And we do have really nice uh, small little bobas as well. My mom really loves this dessert. And right. when she was a kid, there used to be this guy, like we call him the Tau guy. He has this long stick that he would carry and on the ends of those two sticks... Oh, that's impossible. That plates. And he actually has this long stick that we carry around the kampong and at the ends of these two sticks, they have these buckets of this tau hui. And you basically would just bring your own cup or any vessel that you have and you scoop the tau hui for you. Traditionally, Filipinos would have this warm and not like a cold version like he has here. And we will eat it out of like a spoon like this and not sure. Right. Yeah, so that's the two differences that we have here. Tau hui, I mean, in fact, mm. I would say that's all plates. Plain two. Yeah. yeah. That's as well as it's going No, it's not. Third okay. one. So, Seth, what looks most interesting to you? This actually looks like misiam to me. Yeah. But the sauce is so thick though. It looks like a gravy. It's like a tangkun like... mirabus kind of like combination. Yeah. So, polabo is actually made with like shrimp shrimp stock. And the color is actually from something Lava. called ashwete. It's kind of like a red little like batu, like a stone. A really small red stone. And it's actually a, a seed from a fruit called right. natto. Wait, is that the same as the, you know, the Japanese natto? No, no. We it's com about completely different. different, different, natto. different. Okay. Different Noodles. Well. Or a breakfast. Cheers. Cheers. Good old cheers. Okay, it's way more savory than I thought it would mm. be. It's a little bit salty and you get a little bit of that prawn stock flavor. It's very mild, it's not as heavy as it looks. Right. Very easy dish to kind of swallow it, uh, you know what I mean? Texture wise, this is similar to, you know, the oyster mee sua. Oh, right. yes. Yeah, this is the dish Carb that dish, uh, everyone's probably most familiar with in yep. Filipino cuisine. It is called sisig. This is actually a roasted pork belly. Sometimes they have it fried, depends. Um, a lot of times we have this as leftovers as well. If you have a, okay. we we're talking about lechon, right? Yeah. So we have too much lechon from like a fiesta. 
pasta, yeah. like a feast. And then you we would fry it up. Yeah, we would chop it up and we fry it up yeah. and it becomes seasick. Essentially, yeah. this is just uh, seasoned with um, some calamansi, uh, maybe some soy sauce and vinegar. I love pork fat. Cheers. Cheers. Ow. Wow. I think I got like cut a bit. So sisi is not just made with pork belly. Not just pork belly. Well, I don't want to say, but pig face. Pig face. And the crunchy bit you just had yeah. usually is the ear. Yeah. So you, so you like use chop up the, the face. Off, the off parts as well. And yeah. mix with the pork belly as well. Yeah. So right? nowadays we don't actually do pig face. We oh, still do ear. like the, the texture. So uh, uh, they do still use like the ear. So this yeah. is not pig face. It's not. By use it. Okay. Used to be. It's really, really strong, really umami meatiness. It has mm. a nice punch of the calamansi as well. And the mayonnaise mm. kind of rounds everything together because you mm. get a, like a sharp hit of the onions, of the chilies, and as well as the sour calamansi. The mayo to kind of round and balance everything together. That's why we have something creamy like mayo or eggs all the time. I like the heavy flavors, like the acidity, it cuts through. Yeah. I love like fat and acid. So You're going to love today. Yeah, yeah. and I love pork. I, I wouldn't mind if it was like pork face to it. You can't see the face. Eh? So anyway, this is, this is the breakfast staple that we have in Philippines. It's like so, rice and sausage and meat. Yeah, right. <laughs> Basically, it rice and okay. meat. So this is called right. uh, tosilog. Generally, this is tocino. I think I would liken it to char siu. That's yeah. kind of marinated and like cured in like yeah. a lot of sugar. And you have that famous red coloring again in mm -hmm. Philippines. Mm -hmm. Everything's red, even the sausages. That's kind of like tapu. It's really just char siu taste with a lot, yeah, a lot, a lot of, of sugar. It is sweet, it is savory. It's not like an off-putting kind of sweetness. Is it fried? Yeah, normally this is fried. Yeah, so we should try this one. So this is longanisa, like a sausage that is also sweet. Like a Taiwan sausage kind of thing? Yeah, plus 25% sugar. Why is it that things are just sweeter in the Philippines? I don't know. Why do we have banana ketchup? <laughs> A lap chong and a tiny sausage had a baby, and then they added 25% more sugar. Texture wise, yeah, it's kind of in, in between like mm. a lap chong, which is like very dry, and then tiny sausage is not yeah. as dry. So there's a lot of like minced meat, as you can see, yeah. they kind of put in quite a bit of fat as well oh, inside. You can taste yeah. the, the pepper as well. Yeah, it is Loganisa particularly. They have really strong like black pepper flavor, which I yeah, really like, I like to it. counteract the plus 25% sugar. I think the only question I want to ask is, did they actually use like pork face in... Oh yeah. They yeah. actually made it uh, uh, pork damn. belly, so it's more palatable. <laughs> ah, uh, okay. Thank okay. you for making the food. Thank you Thank for you, coming, guys. Gabriel. So we're now at Gary's Grill. Gary? Jerry? Jerry's? Maybe Jerry's? Jerry's? Gary's? This is one of yes. the few places where they do a lot of grills and they have really nice yeah. stick as well. And they have a lot of like different variety of food. Family Franchise. chain restaurant kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. In Philippines, we do have like a lot of Jerry's as well. So that's why it's, it's cool that they brought this one particular outlet here. Is this where I get my Filipino card? We're gonna involved? test how Filipino run is. What is the national dish of Philippines? Official or unofficial? Official. I think official would probably official. be lechon. Unofficial would be adobo. It's a trick question and there's no official national dish today. Mm. Okay. Why was banana actually used? as a ketchup. They didn't have that much tomato, so they used ban bananas itself to kind of replace it. Banana ketchup was first introduced during World War II due to a wartime shortage of mm. tomatoes. So it's made from banana, sugar, vinegar, and spices, and it's actually used in many of the Filipino households. Yeah. Jollibee was oh, not I know ask a me. fast food restaurant at the start. What kind of shop did Jollibee start off as? We have a lot yeah, of yeah. ice cream vendors in Philippines where they kind of sell like different flavors of ice cream. So I'm going with ice cream. How the hell did you guess it was ice cream? Yeah. Oh shit, nice. So Jollibee actually started out as an ice cream shop. Very good. Ryan is 99% Filipino. Yeah, so our food is so, here. We do have our, our adobo fried adobo rice. Adobo fried rice. Uh, we have dinet dakang, which is basically grilled pork belly. Dinet dakang. So this is tota talong, which is egg eggplant. Where is the eggplant? So if you do a little... little fl uh, ooh, there you go. So that's the it, eggplant. It looks like a um, Chinese omelette. Yeah. Like a oh, yeah, yeah. wrong or something. Yeah. yeah. So basically, fried. it's like butterfly eggplant, and then they kind of like yeah. make it really flat, and then they put a bunch of egg yeah. on it, and they fry it out. And then last, we have Jerry's really famous fried chicken. Fried right, chicken. Is it better than, you know, the other place? The other fried the chicken other place? The other place? Adobo fried rice. Yeah. Adobo is a way of cooking meats. The base of it is just vinegar, lots of vinegar, peppercorns, bay leaf, and, and soy sauce. Let's give it a try. It reminds me oh. of clay pot rice. So it's super punchy, really nice like char nuttiness of the garlic and a really strong hit of that soy sauce as well. This sourness that comes in the bag as well. So this from the vinegar. I think it's like a dish by itself. Like this is just good on its own. The pork is super tender. I like it. This is really good. I cut it like a pizza. Oh wow, oh, nice. Look, it's a triangle. That's, that's a, thank you. 
Yeah, it's like mint pork as well. Mm, yeah. The flavour is actually pretty mild. The rice is actually a lot stronger in flavour. I think you can say it's pretty similar to your um, it is. tzitzel omelette, um, yeah, right? It's very just, just with uh, like an eggplant at the bottom. It's very similar to like, yeah, Chinese mm. tzitzel style of omelettes. Uh. It actually works really well with the rice. And then here we have a little chilli party on it, like the birthday cake. Okay, okay, so the next dish we're gonna try is the dinak dakan. This is kind of like a... It's spicy. A little bit like spicy kind of a spicy. salad, I would say, like a pork belly salad. Right. It's a whole different so that's, kick. That's pretty spicy. It's yeah. really good. It really complements like the, the pork because it's kind of like fatty. Yeah. And the creaminess is it surprisingly gels everything together. Mm. The first hit, a bunch of like chili whack you in the mouth, but it's just yep. nice lingeringness. After you're done coughing, the creaminess kind of mellows everything out. They have many different styles of dinak dakan here. This is my first time trying this style, and I kind of like it. It's pretty good. Yep. I'm just curious whether this is banana ketchup or not. Is that? I think it's just regular chili. <laughs> this looks super crunchy. It's super crunchy. It's seasoned quite nicely. It's not as salty as I thought it, you know, most of the things would be in the Philippines. I'd say I would prefer this over Jollibee. It is better than Jollibee. Yeah. This um, is really good. Yeah, way better. Oh, oh, oh. That is juicy. But here, to me, it feels like a family diner. I will come with my family. The dishes kind of remind me of Chinese dishes, so it's mm. not like you're gonna try something completely different. So I think this is a good entry level kind of restaurant if you wanna bring your yep. friends. It's, it's nothing too crazy. Safe. Kind of familiar, but yeah. with like maybe one or two different yep. elements that's mm. you know, it's a little bit yep. different. And that's Jerry's. Let's yes. move on to so the, the last step. Yeah spot of the day. Lechon Le Republic. 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 I am most excited for this place. I love Lechon. We're gonna power through because this one is my personal favorite spot. So yeah. I have actually read about this place mm. before and it's apparently like one of the best places for Lechon in Singapore. Well, even for me, it is the best. At least. Oh. Yeah. Let's go. Try some pork. How do you actually make your lechon? The lechon tastes good uh, when you cook in charcoal. So it takes about like uh, three hours to roast it? Almost, yeah. Because okay. it's only belly. Oh, so it's, it's, only, belly. Oh, it's okay. only the belly. So how many kilos of pork belly do you make a day? We don't count as kilo, we, don't, right. uh, we count as per belly. 12 to 14 pieces. 12 to 14 yeah. pork belly pieces but if a day. Weekends, we usually cook like 20, 22, 24. We have our lechon, we have our kare kare, we have some mango with baguong, mm -hmm. and we have a surprise uh, chicharron budlaklak, which Seth has no idea what it is. This is actually half a kg of uh, lechon, and they only use pork belly here. Kare kare is interesting that it is not a curry at all. I thought it would be a curry, but it's wearing some kind of peanut soup. They usually have it with like fried vegetables. Uh, down here we have some eggplants. Um, eggplant. We have some greens as well. Some and greens. they threw in some and of course, fried lechon, of course. Ooh, peanut butter soup. <laughs> exactly, that's what it is. Did. Okay, it's not overly like salty or sweet, but like really just peanut butter. Allegedly, it, it comes from like um, curry, somewhere in the islands apparently. There's a lot of uh, spice tree going on back in the day. So mm. they brought in some spices and they yep. actually make curry. They, they kind of ran out of spice. Ran or, out spice. Not ran out of spice. Like, they, couldn't curry. Get, they couldn't get the curry. Yeah, they couldn't get right, the curry. Right, they couldn't right, get right, the right, spice. Right. Damn the spice! Yeah, so they tried to make it look like curry, but it has no curry inside. But made with peanut. So I think to better describe the taste, it's, um, it's pretty thick. If you go home and try, just get a peanut butter, put like a tablespoon of it and put maybe half a cup of water and just like microwave or boil it, you probably get the same kind of flavour that we're having now. Yep. The highlight of the day, of course, is going to be pork belly lechon. Yes. Super glassy, super crispy. You know it's going to be good when you have that kind of like sheen, that glassiness to it. That's the one thing that everyone goes for. What does the skin all fall off the I think it's because of the, the nice separation they have. They rent out all the fat from the bottom of the skin. All oh, right, all so the fat So it makes it gone. really right. juicy. It's like a self-moisting kind of, kind self, of thing. Self-moisting. Self. <laughs> What's the sauce about? They do it different everywhere, but traditionally they do have like pork liver in this and they thicken it with breadcrumbs. Pork liver. Soy the sauce, vinegar. brown sugar, vinegar, coconut vinegar. Oh, God. Oh, man. Damn. This is like crispier than like the normal Chinese sucking pig as well. This is glassy skin. The skin skin was 10 about 10. It is so tender. The fat is not too flying as well. The fat kind of like sticks to your mouth and everything. This one kind of feels like you can just consume it. You can still taste a lot of the meat itself, yeah. not just that fat. I think because they start with only pork belly, so yeah. it is already like very fatty. Versus like if you use the whole thing, like some parts are not as uh, tender, correct, not correct. as fatty, but like <laughs> this all like very consistent. It's pretty clean tasting in terms of lechon. Garlic, 
or something. For sure. Filipino, you always have garlic and onions. Oh, garlic, garlic sure. and everything. This is it's pretty good, right? It's pretty, pretty good. good. I'll say the best. The but best? In, in Singapore, I you bet. You it? So we're gonna try this dish. So is it is it meat? It's meat. It's, it's meat. pork. Oh, so this is see. called chicharron bulaklak. Why does it look like a flower? So oh. whenever we eat chicharron, you gotta always have it with some vinegar. Okay, well dip it Just dunk it. it. Yeah. Oh. Mm, fried. There's definitely some kind of inner. Reminds me of intestine. Somewhere, You're not wrong, yeah. somewhere in the abdomen. Somewhere in the abdomen. Yeah. Okay, those in the audience now who are not Filipino, if you can guess what this yeah. is. Leave a comment if you guys. Yeah, what about the crew? What do you what do you guys think this is? The ear. Ear? Where got what ear looks like this? The ear, ass. Not... Is it ass? Is it rectum? Is it rectum? Do you like the ass, rectum? Seth? We have tried it before. Is it rectum? It's not rectum. Testicle. If anyone's testicle looks like that, I don't know, man. hospital right there, we need to get it checked out. <laughs> Maybe after you fry it, it looks like that. Help me, my balls are on fire. So this thing is called ruffled fat. The ruffled fat is actually the connective tissue that suspends all your intestines, your your, your stomach and everything. Okay. So Be whenever fast. you kind of just like pull yeah. apart like, yeah, yeah, I don't know, your pork belly yeah. or anything, you kind of see like the white stringy bits. That's uh -huh. kind of how it looks like. Green, Green mango. Like unripe mango, with, so it's kind of tart, kind of chalky. And we have the bagong, which is like fermented shrimp paste. You know me mix it together or... Oh god, it's spicy. It's no good, it's not spicy. It's salty, salty bro, salty. I like the shrimp flavour really comes in, but man, the saltiness really kicks my cholesterol up a notch. <laughs> yeah, I think if you control the amount of... Sodium. ...sauce, it's not too bad, right? Uh, yeah, the mouth face is actually pretty nice. They're kind of like semi-ripe, so it's a little bit sweet. I yep. guess it's kind of healthy for a snack it's too. Nice, like right? yeah. It's addictive, right? So this is Lechon Republic. Republic. Like in terms of authenticity, like how how is this on the scale for you? This is pretty much what I would get back in the Philippines, like your average yep. fare. And honestly, the Lechon is really, really good compared to like other places I've tried. Yeah. So this is really one of my favorite spots. And this Bulak Lak as well. Don't be too scared to try it. It's really um, hard to find in Singapore as well. Let's round up what we ate today and you know, just highlight what our favorites of the day. All yeah. right. So we are at the end of today's episode. What is your favorite dish? Honestly, I'm a pretty simple guy. I do like the Taho from second serving. That's my go-to. I can eat that every other day. For all, like the main dish, the uh -huh. main real robust yeah, like yeah. lunch stuff, I think the Dina Dakan from uh, Jerry's, I believe. A uh, mouth full of thing. chili. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, was, uh, that packed quite a punch. Yes, it did. For me, the most surprising was maybe like the Bulak Lak, which was oh, the yeah. ruffled fat, the uh, connective tissues. Tissue. I think the taste was really surprising. It was like fatty, it was a bit chewy. Yeah. I, I just like that texture. And then that was probably like the Lechon, of course. Lechon Republic does a freaking sick Sick, super, sick super lechon. Good lechon. Do let us know in the comments any Filipinos out there in Singapore watching if you know you've discovered some new places to yes. try or you don't think like Ryan like gave us like the good stuff today. Do let us know in the comments as well. Yes. That's it for today's episode of Food Finders. Yes. Do remember to like and subscribe. See you guys next time. Bye.